Hi everyone, in this video we are going to be talking about the basic pathophysiology involved in congenital adrenal hyperplasia that is CAH. All the adrenal hormones are basically derived from one molecule that is the cholesterol. This cholesterol under the effect of many hormones and enzymes after multiple steps will be converted into a molecule called pregnenolone. This occurs in both males and females. This pregnenolone hormone or the byproduct again gets converted after multiple steps to progesterone. Now this progesterone under the influence of a hormone called of an enzyme called 21 alpha hydroxylase gets converted and after multiple steps it leads to the formation of two important hormones from the adrenal gland that is cortisol and aldosterone that is the glucocorticoid which is cortisol and the mineralocorticoid which is aldosterone and both are very much necessary to maintain circulatory system or the blood pressure system in the fetus. Now this is what happens normally. In congenital adrenal hyperplasia the most common enzyme defect involved is this 21 alpha hydroxylase. Now when 21 alpha hydroxylase is deficient by uh, its activity then the formation of cortisol as well as aldosterone is inhibited or there is no formation of both cortisol and aldosterone. So the fetal body detects the absence of these hormones and in turn leads to negative feedback mecha uh, mechanism and hence it triggers the release of ACTH from the fetal pituitary. Now this ACTH from the fetal pituitary because uh, acts on the adrenal gland and hence stimulates the hyperplasia of those adrenal cells. This is in response to undetected cortisol and aldosterone levels. Now when cortisol and aldosterone are not being formed but progesterone as a byproduct is being formed under the influence of ACTH. ACTH is leading to more cortis, uh, cholesterol release, more pregnenolone formation and hence more progesterone is being released under the influence of ACTH. Now this ACTH is starting to get accumulated because it's not being converted into cortisol and mineral corticoid. Hence now this excess of progesterone will start getting converted to another byproduct called 17 hydroxy progesterone. It this ends up as a byproduct which is being formed. This 17 hydroxy progesterone starts getting converted into androstenedione, which is basically a androgen. And this androstenedione will start getting converted into other androgens. And this is the reason for all the pathogenesis which is occurring in congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Now this androgens depending on what is the sex of the fetus that is if it is XY this androgen will not have much of a phenotypic change but if it is a female fetus then what happens this androgens will lead to virilization of the external genitalia. Internal organs or internal genitalia of a XX genotypic female will still remain uterus, fallopian tube and vagina because by the time all the pathophysiology would have started, the internal mullerian development would have been completed and hence internal genitalia of a excess genotypically female fetus will still remain the uterus, the fallopian tubes and the vagina. But under the influence of androgens, there will be virilization of the external genitalia. This leads to the presence of ambiguous genitalia at birth. So the most common cause for ambiguous genitalia at birth is congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Now this is one manifestation of congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Another manifestation of this disease is due to absence of cortisol and aldosterone. Because these two important hormones are not existing at that particular point of time the newborn at birth will present with unexplained circulatory collapse. So any newborn which presents with 
unexplained circulatory collapse first congenital adrenal hyperplasia should be ruled out all of the manifestations of the disease depend upon the enzymatic activity of 21 alpha hydroxylase if 21 alpha hydroxylase is completely absent then it is called as classical cah that is it is classical form of the disease in this there will be ambiguous genitalia if it's a female genotypically female child and it presents with circulatory collapse one more uh, part of this cah is if the enzyme activity is present up to 1 to 2% then it presents with a disease called as simple virilizing form why it is called a simple virilizing is this 1 to 2% enzyme activity is enough to maintain the formation of both cortisol and the mineralocorticoid aldosterone and hence it does not present with circulatory collapse instead it presents only with ambiguous genitalia or virilization so circulatory collapse is avoided in this form of the disease another form of the disease is called as non classical disease this non classical disease will have all forms of enzyme activity cortisol aldosterone some of time it will be present and there will be no virilization features but these children with non classical type of cah present at puberty or during adolescence mainly they present with delayed puberty because of the imbalance between the androgenic production so this is the basic pathophysiology involved in congenital adrenal hyperplasia hope it was useful thank you for watching